Welcome back to another video. This explosion tutorial for DaVinci Resolve is gonna blow your mind. I decided to make this explosion tutorial because I was blown away by the amount of requests. Alright. But before we get started, make sure you guys hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss out on a new video. Now, let's get into the video. So if we're making a good explosion effect, we're going to need a couple of different elements. I'm going to be getting all of my elements off of Production Crate for this video. Production Crate boasts a large collection of high quality visual effects assets, ranging from explosions to fire, sound effects, and even music. For the past two years, Production Crate has been my one-stop shop for all my visual effects assets. It's easy to search their website and get the asset that you are looking for. They already have over 10,000 elements and they are constantly adding new ones. If you're interested, check out the link in the description to sign up for a free account or the paid tier today. But now that we have a source to get our explosion elements, I'm going to show you which ones I am using for this video. So first I have my video on the timeline here, okay? It's just a shot on a tripod looking at a street. Then I'll come up to my media pool and I'm going to grab my explosion element. So this is the Footage Crate Ultimate Explosion 3. And now when I play that, we can already see we have an explosion in our clip. I'm going to drag this up and I'm going to add in this footage crate ground effect. It's called the ground impact full. And if I play it, you see it has this ground texture like the ground's getting destroyed from a large impact. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first frame of the explosion and then I can zoom into my timeline here and I'm just going to line up this ground impact so when the explosion starts, the ground gets broken as well. Now I'm going to drag the explosion clip up one more layer and I'm going to add in the footage crate sand shockwave back. Okay, so there's two different shockwave elements. There's a back and then there's a front. And what that allows us to do is put something in the middle, like an explosion. So if I put the back underneath the explosion and I put the front on top of the explosion, now we have a shockwave that's going to extend out but the explosion will be in the middle of it. It's a really cool idea from Production Crate, and it makes adding in shockwaves super easy. And the last thing that I want to add is some lens dirt. So I'm going to grab this lens dirt effect. It is called Dust on Lens 1, and I'll just put this on the top. I'll go a couple frames after the explosion and have it so that that comes onto the screen. And now you can see this one doesn't fully extend to the end of our clip. And since there's no movement towards the end, what I can do is go to the last frame, right click, change clip speed, and then check freeze frame. And when I do that, I can hit change. And now it splits the clip. And if I hit control D, I can change the duration of this clip. So let's just say I do a second. Okay, and now I can shrink that up. And now that lens dirt will stay in the frame the entire time. So now that we have all of our elements imported and lined up, it's time to go into Fusion and put them all together. I'm going to select all my clips, right click on them, and then come up to new Fusion clip. And now if we go into the Fusion page, we can see all of these clips have turned into nodes. So I'm going to organize the nodes quick. So I'm going to bring the media in down here, as well as its merge node, and just kind of set it up like so. And once I've done that, I'm going to go through and name the clips. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go through and disconnect all of these, except for the first one, which is the ground impact. We're just going to add one of these in at a time. That's going to make everything a little bit easier. So first, I'm going to add in a transform node, and then I'm going to position this where I want it on the frame gonna put it right there and I might scale it down just a little bit. Now we need to make it so that this ground matches the actual ground and we're gonna use a couple of tricks for that. First off in the merge node we're gonna come to the apply mode and set it to multiply. You can already see that's matching the texture but it's still not quite right uh, color wise. So after this node I'm gonna add in a color corrector node by using shift space. I'm gonna add just a little bit of an orangish tint and then I can play with the gain settings and the gamma settings. And what I'll do is I'll just get it so that this matches the ground perfectly just like that. All right next up is going to be the shockwave but since we don't have the explosion in yet we're gonna skip that one for now. So let's add our explosion in just by merging it up and then adding a transform node after that. Now let's use the arrow keys to go to the first frame that the explosion appears. We're just going to use this to make sure it is all lined up perfectly. So we'll put it right on where the ground's starting to break and we can jump a few more frames forward just to make sure that this is staying consistent. So now if we play it we have our explosion effect and what we can do is just scale this up just a little bit more. Let's go back towards the beginning just to make sure it all stays lined up correctly. Now I'm going to do some effects on the explosion right away to make it so that this looks even better. So I want to add in some glow, make the bright parts of this explosion even brighter. But I also do not want to affect the smoke. So how we're going to do that is adding in a luma keyer node. And then I'll just drag it off to the side here. So if I take the output of the explosion into the luma keyer and view it off to the side, 
You can see we're still selecting some of the smoke. So let's change the luminance channel or the channel to be red instead of luminance. And now I can play around with the low and high sliders to just select the bright part, parts of the actual explosion. Now I can add in a soft glow node after that. And if I view that, I can add in some glow size and mess with the gain just to add some more glow to it. And now I'll take the output of the soft glow node and drag it up into the output of the explosion node. And that'll create a new merge node connecting them together. Now you can get some kind of weird looking results. Um, so come into the merge node and set the apply no mode to be screen. So now we can play around with these settings some more and we can just tweak them until we get something that we like. Now we're gonna do one more little effect here. Let's add in another Luma keyer. We can actually copy the first one that we used up here. Take the output of the merge six and view it off to the side. Now add in another soft glow node and also view this. Come to the lock X and Y, uncheck that, bring the Y glow size all the way down and the X glow size out quite a ways. Now we can bring the gain down a lot and once again, merge this up, same as we did last time. Then I'll set the apply mode to be screen again. And I'll come into the soft glow node and just play around with some of these settings here. Cause I just want to get these little light streaks coming out from the side. Now I can also go back to the first glow node and mess around with those glow settings just to make sure that they complement each other. We can even come to this lumic here and just fine tune the settings a little bit more to get as much of that smoke out as possible. So now that we've added our ground impact and our explosion, it's time to add in the shock waves. So let's merge both of them up into our merge nodes. And because these are meant to be in the exact same position, let's add in a transform node after the first one, copy it, and then to control shift V after the second one. That's gonna paste an instance. So these two transform nodes are linked. They're gonna do the exact same thing no matter which node I change it in. All right, going back to one of the first frames here that we can actually see the explosion and the shock waves, let's take the first transform node and we'll just line it up with the explosion. So now when we play it, we have a nice shock wave coming out. And I'm actually gonna scale it up a little bit, make sure it's still lined up. And now I'm gonna add in a color corrector node as well just to match the colors. And again, we need to copy it and paste an instance on the other side. So if I zoom in, I'm gonna give it a little bit of an orangish tint, just to give it kind of a dust color. We can mess with the saturation if we want, but I think it's looking pretty good right there. So now we just have a little bit of a dust shockwave coming out from the explosion. Okay, and the final element to add is going to be the lens dirt. So let's merge this up, and you can already see it looks pretty good. But we wanna make it a little bit more intense, or at least I wanna show you how. Let's add in a brightness and contrast node after that. And messing with the gain, we can make it brighter or we can make it darker. And then if we come down to the gamma as well, we can do the same thing. So if I just bring both of those down, as you can see I can darken the dirt quite a bit and just make it so it stands out and it's a little bit more noticeable. Is it realistic? I don't know, but it kind of looks good. All right, and now to give this a little bit more impact, let's add in some camera shake. After the merge five node, do shift space and add in the camera shake node. And this is gonna be kind of crazy at first. So let's go to the frames right before the explosion, right here, bring the overall strength all the way down, add a keyframe, go a few frames forward, bring this all the way up, and then go a little ways after and bring this all the way down. So now when we play it, we have no shake, and then the explosion happens and it shakes a lot, and then it'll go back down to not shaking. Let's bring the X deviation, Y deviation, and the rotation deviation uh, down quite a bit, about half of what they were. Bring the randomness all the way up, and now I also wanna animate the speed a little bit so it's not as fast at the beginning, uh, but then it speeds up and then slows back down. So let's go to frame 45, bring it up to something around uh, six, six and a half, and then all the way at the end, we'll bring it back down to like 1.9. So now when we play it, we have more intense shake in the middle and then it slows down. Let's head up to the spline editor and we can kind of tweak the actual spline paths. So if I check that, do control F, it'll fit it to the view. I'm gonna select these middle keyframes and hit F on my keyboard, then hit T and then bring the ease out up just a little bit. Then I'll also come to these ones, hit F, and that's just gonna smooth it all out just a little bit more. So we're gonna have a little bit more intense camera shake and then it's gonna slow down. And if you wanna bring the intensity up, just change the speed slider and that'll make it more or less intense. Then I can set the edges to be mirror. So whenever it is transparent like this, it's just gonna mirror the image. If it's really noticeable, what you can do is add in a transform node after this camera shake and then just scale it in just a little bit so that you don't see that. But this still doesn't look quite right. So let's go to the settings, add motion blur, and bring the quality up to 
9 or 10. And now we've got a nice motion blur while this is shaking. I still think it's not quite intense enough, so I'm just going to bring up the deviation amounts. And now we can head back to the edit page and let it cache. So just wait for this red line to turn blue, and then you can see a real-time preview of how the explosion is going to look. So now if I play this, this is the effect that we're getting. But there's one thing that we can do yet to make it look even more cinematic, and that is adding a final color grade. So let's head over to the color page. So first I'm going to add in a new color node, so just doing Alt S. Then I'll add in a color space transform and set it on the second node. I'm going to leave everything at default except for the output gamma, and I'm going to change that to the film log preset. Now I'll head over to the LUTs, come down to film looks, and then bring in this Rec 709 Kodak uh, 2383 on the D55 variant. And if I drag this right onto this node, you can see it's giving you a really intense cinematic look. I'm going to come down to the keying tab, okay? And then I can bring the key output and the gain, and this is pretty much going to be an intensity of this effect. So I'll put that around 50%. And now back in my first node, I can play around with some of the like contrast settings and whatnot and brightness settings and just make it so it looks a little bit nicer. So with these two nodes, went from this to that. Right, so it just looks a little bit more cinematic. Well anyways, that is how you composite an explosion inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below so you never miss out on a new video. Again, big thanks to Production Cry for sponsoring this video, and if you guys want these awesome visual effects elements, check them out at the link down below. With all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.